Welcome again to another video. So I have just received my scrawler box in the post and as always I am too excited to leave and not open it so I'm going to open it now before I head out to get some shopping. So it feels not as heavy as the last box but it doesn't have any bowing so it's obviously got something thick in there. So let's open this up. Let's take this off camera so you don't see my address. As you can see I definitely haven't opened it. Okay so for those of you who don't know what Scrollerbox is, it is a monthly subscription box where every month Scrollerbox send you art supplies and you have no idea what the art supplies are and there is also something called a Scroller Challenge where there is a phrase or a word where you use just the supplies given in this box to create a piece of artwork based off that phrase or word. Um, it's just a £15 a month subscription, um, free UK delivery and I think there is a charge for, well there is a charge for um, shipping f to um, other countries. So, oh, chipped my nail polish already. Great. Okay, so, ooh, this looks interesting already. So, we won't look at any of this, a neat package as per. We'll get the artwork and the paper out and move the box out of the way. Oh, okay. All my nail polish is coming off. I mustn't have let it dry enough. Okay, so we'll put this out of the way. So, firstly, we have this featured artist. This looks very nice. I like this. I really like this, in fact. I really like this. So it's kind of like an Aztec kind of building, ruin maybe, not sure, with a weird looking creature coming out of here. Okay, so this is the featured artist, Rob Turpin, from the north of England, working near London. So that's a little bit about him and some of his social media there. So I'm definitely going to be checking this person out. Looks quite cool. I really enjoy this artwork. Great. Okay, so we've got some paper here, very smooth feeling paper, maybe markers or pencils perhaps. Okay, so we'll probably hear a bit more about that. So we'll open this package first. Okay, so this is our thing with them um, telling us what's in the box, so I shall tell you whilst I'm reading. Ooh, interesting. So each box comes with a little sweet, which is quite nice. So this is a hard boiled, I'm assuming this is lemon with a sherbet in. I used to love these as a child. Don't know why I'm trying to get you to focus on this. <laughs> okay, and a nice scrawler box sticker to add to my collection. Okay, so firstly on the list, there is this Derwent Precision Mechanical Pencil. It's a 0.5, so it's um about I have like 0.7s and 0.5s, so I'd say it was kind of a mid-range. It says in here, it's the first mechanical, Derwent's first mechanical pencil. Hmm. Metal barrel designed for optimal grip and balance. It also includes a built-in eraser under the push button cap, which retracts, extends the nib. Precision has a smooth laydown of graphite, suitable for fine detail and cross-hatching techniques. So we have, it's rare to get, well, I don't know how rare it is, but it's rare to get um, a mechanical pencil that actually comes with eraser replacements. And we also get some replacement um, nib cartridges, uh, pencil cartridges. So that's pretty cool. So we'll try that out in a minute and we'll give it a little open. Next is this ISO sketch. So I'm taking this as like an isograph where you draw circles and such, but this looks very different. Ooh, can you draw? Ooh, this is for 3D sketching. Oh, I like this. Okay, it's a simple drawing tool that makes it really easy to draw 3D shapes and it fits into your pocket. ISO Sketch combines all the templates and st stencils needed to create a perfect isometric drawing in seconds. Quickly and easily get the angle right to accurately bring your imagination palace to life. Oh, I'm excited about this. I am very excited. Great, so we'll open that again in a second. 
Next are some Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. So I've, with that paper, I knew there should be markers in here. I could feel, you know, that it needed marker paper for these. Um, so they share the same ink and colour chart as the original Spectrum Noir alcohol markers with a new and exclusive nib combination. The fine bullet nib for smaller details and the thicker brush nib for smooth natural fills. So instead of it being the th wide um, nib on usual markers and then a bullet nib, it's actually got a brush and a bullet nib. So that's your brush there. And then you have your bullet nib. Oh, that's a very fine bullet nib as well. So the colours that they've given us are Wisteria and Old Lavender. So kind of um, a very light beige colour and obviously a kind of lilac-y lavender colour. So next is a Stay Below 0.88 fine liner. So I've actually used these before. They're really nice to write with um, and line things with. So it's just a standard liner. There we go. And then last on the list are Derwent Shaped Erasers. So they've actually got, I'll show you the, they've actually got a picture of two different shapes on there. So I'm assuming some people got a different shape. And um, mine is this kind of, um, triangle shape here. So it's smudge free. These derwent shaped erasers are perfect for those that prefer a different grip and are easy to hold and control. Available in two shapes and colours that give the same quality results. So that's great. And then there's nothing on the paper but I would assume it's just um, smooth kind of uh, MAC paper. So that's quite nice. And then the scroller challenge that we will be creating this out with is Imagination Palace. So that's good. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll just have to do some sort of building or something similar to the featured artist would be quite cool. I like that idea, um, but we'll work on that. So I'll just get a book to um, test these supplies on and we'll have a look at what they're like. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so I have some paper here. We'll first test out the marker pens, um, use the brush nibs. So I'll zoom in a little bit for you to see. Okay, so first is Wisteria. Oh, that's actually a really nice colour, I would say. So I like that. It's a nice colour. Um, very smooth. Uh, it'd obviously be better on MAC paper, but um, it's quite nice. Okay, and the next is the Old Lavender which is just a dark colour, I would say. So the Wisteria, I would say, is just a very um, beigey lavender. And then the old lavender is obviously kind of like a, a dulled down bright lavender. And they blend really well, so that's good. They blend really well on kind of normal sketching paper, so that's nice. Um, they'll be nice to add shading to a drawing rather than actual colour, so that would be quite cool. Um, next, this is just obviously your standard fine line tip um, yeah nothing special about that really uh, next we shall open this precision pen I really like the look of this this is cool I also like the um, the Louvre drawn in the background that's quite nice um, okay Ugh. hate this type of packaging I'll have to get, where's my craft knife gone? To use this instead. Okay. Why is this so difficult to open? Okay, right, we're in. We're in. Right, there we go. So. This is the first mechanical pencil Derwent's ever made, and I think I saw some reviews, so not reviews, but I've seen this out. So these are the um, these are the rubbers. Don't know. It'd be cool if they came in a, like a little packet or something, because I don't really know where to store those <laughs> to not lose them. They're kind of the same width as the Derwent mechanical rubber, though, so you could probably chop down the mechanical rubbers um, refills to to put in this if you can't find the actual refills. So, ooh, fancy. Look at this dispenser. So, I don't know if that's going to focus. So this is the um, dispenser for all the replacement. Ooh, look at that. 
fancy. Very fancy indeed. Cool, right. Um, and then this is a little bit of weight to it. It's kind of, it's not a round barrel, although it looks like it. It's kind of, um, it's got little sides on it. I'm not going to tell you how many sides of a shape that is because it's too many. <laughs> um, oh, cool. So, I don't know why that's not focusing. So I just use standard mechanical pencil, but it has a little bit of weight to it, it feels very sturdy. It's not a plastic one like some of the other mechanical pencils we've received in the scroll boxes. Um, so that would be quite interesting to use. How soft, it's HB though, so it's not a soft lead. Um, I might have a 2B I could put in here. Although it feels decent enough, I wouldn't say it was bad. Um, so that's hard, that's soft. Yeah, it's okay, and we'll try the Derwent rubber with it. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So that's me pressing on hard with that pencil. So it rubs out really well, in fact, because I really did press on hard there. Yeah, it's nice. Um, it's about, I would say it's just like any other rubber. I wouldn't say it has any special qualities to it. Uh, maybe over ink it won't smudge ink. I don't know. But um, it's quite a nice feeling rubber anyway. So now we will use this ISO sketch. I like this. This is cool. Um, made in Britain. So I've never heard of this, which is weird. Um, this might come in handy with my uh, my job. So let's get this open. I love that everything's coming in packaging. I like it when things come in packets. Yeah, so it's quite actually, it's quite thick. Um, feels quite nice. So you've got all the shapes that you might need to draw something 3D. So you've got your ellipses for drawing, you know, circles on the side of squares and things. Um, so let's draw, let's draw like a, a square. Can you imagine this is quite difficult to line things up though, but oh, I don't see it being um, a hassle, too much of a hassle. So you've got that and then obviously you'd go and get your square. You obviously use the ruler for the rest of that, but yeah, you get the gist. And there's um, different shapes, there's curves, your ellipses, smaller kind of square sort of things, triangles, and you've got your rulers. I think that's cool. That's cool. Really cool. So I think We'll be able to draw some cool stuff with that. Um, a lot of perspective, I would say, for this um, for this challenge. So, imagine palace. So we'll get on that and create something cool. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the flip side. Well, here we are then. So I started off. I kind of did a few sketches in my sketchbook that you saw me test the supplies in, and. I decided on doing kind of a generic, generic castle but on a cliff face and it's actually more difficult <laughs> than I thought it would be to do this sort of thing. So as you can see here I'm taping down my paper because I was finding it kind of difficult to draw with the ruler and a pencil without holding my paper down so I just taped it down um, and I used the, the ISO, what's it called? I so sketch tool as you can see here so I started off with a basic box to kind of give me a basis of where the the bottom of this kind of um, palace castle thing is going to be and then I made it slightly wider because obviously this um this tool doesn't allow you to go any wider than you know obviously it's widest point so yes yeah, so that I did that and then I created a bit of a box and I started using that very sharp angle at the top um, that you can see on the tool to create kind of the roofs on the towers. Um, yeah, so that's how I basically did all the tower roofs. I can't really, I don't know how to explain how I did it. It's um, it's different and took me a long time. The sketching, there's a lot of parts you'll see that I've skipped over because the sketching really did take such a long time. I was having to plan it out, rub it out, um, just just 
overall try and sketch it out as much as I wanted before I started colouring it because once I start colouring it obviously I can't add anything else onto the drawing. So that's basically where we're at. Um, once you see me draw all this out I'll give you a couple a bit of feedback on the supplies. So I like the this isograph tool it was um, fun to use but like I say kind of difficult you kind of still needed to draw things out and plan it out and um, I think it would be better for maybe a graphic design student or something someone who needs to be drawn in boxes to be able to plan things out um, I could have done with this when I did my engineering diploma really and um, it would have been a perfect tool and then onto the pencil I really liked this pencil although it was HB lead it was soft it was really nice um, the pencil itself has a little bit of weight to it and I'm not used to used to that with a pencil really and it was kind of it was kind of nice you could get some crisp lines with it and um, what I will say is I almost ran out of my first lead which usually doesn't happen when I do a sketch and I also used up a whole rubber on the tip there the rubber itself that came with it the Derwent shaped rubber that was really good to use it rubbed out perfectly the only criticism I have is that you can't really get into fine areas that's why I use the tip of my the rubber on my pencil to kind of get a lot of places and um, but it did rub out very nicely I did like the feel of the rubber it wasn't too soft so you don't get that kind of thing when you use a rubber where it starts to bend when you're trying to press quite hard to rub out something out so yeah and um, the markers I really enjoyed the markers you'll see how I use them and um, one criticism of the box I will have is that you could have done with like a blender or a very 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 light almost clear marker um, as I tried to create the illusion of light on the sides of these towers but it was really difficult to do because I tried to leave just the white paper behind um, but you could see the stark difference between the marker and the paper so I ended up filling them in which you'll see soon um, but yeah the markers were really nice they blended really nice um, and the liner is just like a generic liner very nice to work with um, nothing too special about that um, my inspiration for this I kind of looked at a few things I kind of looked at castles on hills um, especially for the for the rock faces and things like that um, I also I also looked at, if anyone watches um, The Last Airbender, Legend of Aang, um, I, I kind of looked at the air temples um, that are in the TV show because I really liked the look of those and so I kind of got a bit of inspiration off those as well. So um, yeah, there's not nothing really much else to say whilst I'm doing all this sketching but other than that it took a very long time so um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll let you watch the rest of the sketching and then I'll pipe up when there's something else to say. So from about this stage, after I've done all the lines and stuff, you'll see me start shading things in a lot, and I actually did a lot of heavy shading with my pencil. Um, this was because I knew that the markers were kind of like a one-tone thing, you couldn't really make them too much darker in areas other than if you layer them very slightly. Um, so I kind of used my pencil to shade things in to actually darken the marker when the marker goes on, so that was another trick that I did during this process. So you can see that I drew a bit of the sun on the right, on the um, the tape that I've taped the paper down with. I drew a sun there to show where I wanted the light coming from. It's not that circle in the, on the right there, it's kind of above it, you can see some lines coming out of it. 
that's just to help me find out where I need to shade things and also where I need to leave a bit of highlights if possible. There's actually a few points in this that I think that the drawing actually looks better at that stage and not taken any further. So once I've done all the shading um, with all the buildings and with the rock face at the bottom, I really liked that. Um, and then there's a point later on where I've just coloured it all in and that actually looks really, really nice like that as well. Um, <laughs> and then I obviously have to use pens. Often I, I prefer my sketches to a coloured version and um, which is unfortunate really, but that's the way it goes. So here I'm coming at the end of the sketching period. I just did a few clouds in the background just to fill up a bit of space. Um, yeah. So here's me colouring. I started with the bullet nib, and um, this is when I was trying to leave the highlighted areas, but it was leaving it a bit streaky, and again, I realised I didn't like the white paper used as the highlights. So you'll see in a moment I move on to the brush nib and just colour in the every building completely. In hindsight, I think I would have added less colour, maybe not coloured in everything, and just maybe just done the roofs or the paths or something because like I say I really liked the way the um, the pencil the finished pencil sketch looked in the end but um, uh, I think it depends what you want to go for maybe next time I'll do that um, or something because I did enjoy the way this ends up looking And as you can see, where I've layered up the marker as well, um, it went darker in areas, so that was really um, handy to do, really, was to layer up the marker, just like other alcohol markers. Um, for these buildings, I used the old lavender colour. Um, so yeah, I think um, my camera stopped filming, but I used the um, the wisteria colour for the rock faces. I didn't fill all the colouring because I did use I did use the white paper as highlights on that because um, otherwise it would have been um, too dark. And now I'm actually using the liner to go over things. And at the start here, again, as you can see, where all the markers finished, it actually looks good, and I like the way that looks. Um, but obviously, I had to use the marker the fine liner and now I started regretting it about this point <laughs> um, started hating it wishing that I'd used it for something else but then as I go in further and add more line work it seems to work out a bit more and I, I get to add a little bit more detail with the line work with windows with um, kind of like little um, scalloping on the roofs at the bottom of them and things like that um, which was kind of a nice thing to do really and um, in a second you will actually see that I use the the fine liner to add shadowing in a crosshatch type of way and I saw someone do that um, in a pre in a video elsewhere I can't remember where where they use cross hatching in different directions and you overlay it to obviously create darker areas and you don't layer it up as much to create a lighter area so that's kind of what I did I used it on the edge of them in some areas I wish I hadn't used so much cross hatching because it didn't look as good but in others I think it worked well um, and 
some areas I really did have to refrain, like the left hand side where there's the kind of three towers with the walls in between them, um, at the bottom, they, they could have, they technically should be the most shadowed because they're nowhere near the light, they're being shadowed that side and technically should have had all the cross hatching on that but um, I realised that probably would have been too much and it would have blended into the um, rock face at the bottom so that's how, I, that's why I didn't really do that. Um, the rock face didn't turn out how I liked. I wish I'd just lined it a little bit, added a few little lines and kind of left the colouring and the shading that I did with the pencil there because that actually looked really good. My cross hatching I would say ruined the rock face but um, you live and learn and maybe someday I'll do another illustration like this because I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, so I'll finish off here and let you watch the rest without me nattering on but I really enjoyed this box um, there's nothing here that I wouldn't use again um, I definitely think I might do some more kind of illustrations of buildings or perspective sort of things um, I was intending to add something like a dragon or something like that but then I just thought that might be something uh, I don't know something that goes quite obviously with a castle like this so I kind of just left it as the castle on a rock use your imagination, um, hence why it's imagination palace, so I hope I've met the brief, um, so give me a comment in the description, I mean give me a comment in the comments below, um, whether you think that I met the imagined palace scroll challenge brief, and whether you think that I use the supplies well, um, and maybe what else you think that I could have done differently um, with these supplies, and um, also link me to anything that you have done with this scroller box I'd be happy to have a look um, and I enjoy seeing everyone else's work. So thank you very much for watching and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed and a subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you. Bye.
comment tell me maybe suggest some other birds i'd prefer to do british birds just because i'm do you know british <laughs> um and i like to do birds that i recognize and know and um because sometimes i feel a little bit strange kind of doing birds i'm not really familiar with um and haven't seen myself so i'd like to do that so please suggest some birds if you know some um 